Srimad Bhagavatam, this book, this is Srimad Bhagavatam, it's a scripture and it's telling about, here we were reading, reading about Narada Muni giving instruction to Maharaj Yudhisthira. Maharaj Yudhisthira is the oldest of the five Pandavas. So Maharaj Yudhisthira, all the Pandavas, they were all married to Draupadi. Right? They, they shared the wife. Of course they had other wives also. <coughs> like Arjuna had four wives. Topadi was one of them. And then there was also Subhadra. Krishna's sister Subhadra, she was married to Arjuna also. Two other wives. So, Maharaj Yudhisthira wanted to know about what is the duty. How do you how do you behave as a grihasta, as a married person? It's different when you're single. You know, it's different. And then when you get married, and then life is different. Different duties, different responsibilities in family life than when, when you're single. Just like when you're single, you will have friends who will also be single. Most of them won't be married. But once you get married, then most of your friends will be married to you. That's natural. So things do change. So, Maharaj Yudhisthira wants to understand what is the duty of the a uh, grihasta, grihasta, we say grihasta, Grih means married. But grihasta means more than just married. There are two kinds of married people, two kinds of householders. One is called the grihasta and the other is called the grihamedi. Grihamedi means one who is very materialistic and very envious. And he's all, he always wants to be better than other people. You know, he's very much conscious of what other people have got and he wants to do, he wants to be better than other people. So, a Griha maybe, he's not thinking about his own spiritual life. We talk about spiritual life, consciousness. He's not thinking about his uh, duty in a in a sense of being a devotee, just like we are devotees of Krishna, we worship Krishna, we follow some principles as devotees, because Krishna 
instructs us like that. Krishna instructs us that we should be vegetarian. Krishna instructs us to chant the holy name. Krishna himself would wake up in the morning and he would do meditation, chant the mantras and so on. So we also do these things. So, Hare Krishna Guru. We follow Lord Krishna's teachings. But there are other people who don't follow Krishna's teachings. Oh, there's many people coming. who live a spiritual life. Although they have a family, they're married and they're having a family, but their life is centered around developing spiritual consciousness, developing their consciousness so that they can control their mind and senses, so that they can be... Uh, God conscious, we could say. But the Grihamedi, those who are the Grihamedi, they are conscious simply, how much money have I got today? And how much will I have tomorrow? And who's got more money than me? <laughs> and they're conscious like that. Who's got more? Who's got a bigger house? Who's got the better car? Who's got more children? Who's, you know, who's got a bigger position in society? This is the Grihamedi. Grihamedi thinks only in terms of the body and in terms of their material situation. But the Grihasta, their center is Krishna. They put Krishna or God, maybe Vishnu, but they put the Supreme Lord in the center and their activities are centered on that. They're not just thinking only about now, but the Grihastas, they're thinking about the future, meaning next life also. Because the Grihamedi, he may have a lot this life, but next life he may have a very bad life. Because he, didn't, he doesn't do anything pious. He doesn't do anything very good for anybody. He only thinks about himself, he's very selfish, very envious and jealous of other people. So those people who are the Grihamedis in the next life, they will go down, they won't go up, they won't get a very good life, a very good birth in the future. But those who are Grihastas, they can go up, they will get a very good life. So we see examples, actually Lord Krishna himself is an example of Grihastha. When Lord Krishna was married and he had his wives, he had many wives, but he would wake up every morning, early in the morning, before the sunrise, he'd wake up for the auspicious time in the day, which we call the Brahma Mahurta. That means before the sunrise, he would wake up and he, after taking his bath and cleaning himself and everything, then he would chant uh, his Gayatri Mantra and meditate on, the, on himself. Lord Krishna would do these things as an example. And Lord Krishna would go to the, he would go to the court every day because when he was living in Dwarka, he had to take care of the kingdom. And every day he would go to the court and he would 
meet with all the people and you hear what are the problems, what is going on. And similarly, before Lord Krishna, Lord Brahma, Ramachandra, Lord Brahma was also a householder. And he had his wife, Sita, and he would take care of his wife and he would also take care of the kingdom and rule the kingdom very nicely. And everyone was very happy with his government. So we heard when we read this chapter from the Srimad Bhagavatam, we just read the summary of the chapter. Narada Muni was telling some of the different principles which are there for the people in Krihasta life, in the family life. And now some people think that all family life is very difficult to make spiritual advancement. They think, oh, if you're in family life, you get very attached to the family and you won't think of Krishna. But it doesn't have to be like that. And Narada Muni is telling how to do it. You see, what you have to do, you have to have a temple in your home. You see? You have a temple, you make a nice altar, and you have Krishna's picture or Krishna's deity, and you offer worship. And when we live in the home, we think, I'm the servant, and the home belongs to God. And I'm simply here, as a servant. He is the master and I am simply a servant. So that's how we should think. And that way you won't become too much uh, lazy and comfortable and attached because the pr in, in family life naturally we, we have a, a, a wife or a husband and you have children and the relationships are very intimate and sweet. And we, we develop attachment for each other. Naturally, the husband and the wife, they'll be attached to each other and be attached to the children. But they will also be attached to Krishna. You see, because they have the deity, they put God here, they have the temple. And by worshipping in the temple every day, then we keep the attachment to Krishna, to God. And that's better for us. Because if we're just attached to the family, we just stay attached to the family, then it will bring us back in the material world. It means we'll come back again. You know, now we have the family, the human family. But next life you may take birth, you may take birth in the family of dogs. You may be born in the family of dogs or pigs or whatever, some animals. So that's not very nice. We don't want that kind of birth. So that, that kind of attachment is there even in the animals. That attachment for our own family, for our own offspring, even the dogs and the, and the pigs, they're also attached to the children, their offspring. So how to avoid that? We have to cultivate spiritual knowledge. It's very important that we have to have spiritual knowledge. And that spiritual knowledge comes about by doing some religious activities, by doing arti, offering the arti, and chanting the holy name, you see, get the family together and you do arti together. Just like in the temple, of course here in Johor Bahru, we don't have really the proper temple where you have people stay, staying. But in Kuala Lumpur, we have the temple there and there are people who stay there in the temple. And so every morning, every day, they will do activities in the temple. They will go, they will do arti, and they will have kirtan. So the same way, in family life, in your home, you have to come together and you do kirtan together. You chant the holy name and someone offers the arti 
where you're chanting the holy name. And the food which is cooked is offered to the deities. And once it's offered to the deities, then it can be distributed. And we distribute to everyone. Right? We don't just think, oh, is it only for me or only for my family. But we ask, we call out, is anyone hungry? If anybody is hungry, please come and take your food with us. You can do like that. That is real family life. That is the ideal family life. We don't want to think that this is mine. If we are thinking to I am the body, this is mine. This is my home, my food. Rather, devotee thinks everything belongs to Krishna belongs to God. It's Krishna's home and the food was offered to Krishna so it's prasada and we distribute. We like to just like if we heard when we read this uh, text here that guests guests will come and we will want to serve the guests. And just like last night we went to the Prabhu's Tarun Krishna's home last night and we had the program and he distributed prasada to everyone. So in this way everyone was greatly benefited by the association. So it's very important for us to do these kind of activities. Not very difficult. Of course not that every time you have to cook a big meal for everyone. It can be very simple. You know, you can give everyone a, a little fruit or some whatever is available easily. It will vary according to the time and the place and the people. But the principles are the same. The principle is to be generous, to be charitable. So Srila Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, Bhaktivinoda Thakur was one of the great acharyas in our line of the Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampradaya. Bhaktivinoda Thakur had a big family, he had more than ten children. And he trained all of them to be devotees, he brought them all up in Krishna consciousness. So sometimes people think, Oh, if you get married, or if you have family, you won't make spiritual advancement. But that's not true. That's not the philosophy at all. Rather, the philosophy is, whatever position you're in, you have to hear about Krishna. So Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he was a sannyasi. He took sannyas. And he met with one man called Ramananda Rai. Now Ramananda Rai, he was a family man. He was married. And he was not a Brahmana. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was born in the Brahmana family. And then he took sannyas. But he met with this one man, Ramananda Rai. And Ramananda Rai was born in a, a family which was not very high in the social standard. By birth it was a low birth, but he was a very educated person. He knew the science of Krishna consciousness. So when Lord Chaitanya met him, Lord Chaitanya asked him, he said, please tell me. And Lord Chaitanya would ask questions to him, and Ramananda Roy would answer. But Ramananda Roy would say that, uh, you know, I should be asking you. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, no. He said, anyone who knows the science of Krishna, then he should be the teacher. It doesn't matter whether you're in the family life or you're renounced. It doesn't matter if you're in this color orange or if you're in the white. It doesn't make any difference. What is important is you should know the teachings about 
about Krishna and about the duties of the different ashrams. So there are different ashrams. There, Grihastha ashram is one of the ashrams. Before Grihastha life, we have brahmachari life, celibate students. We have brahmacharis and brahmacharinis before marriage, you see, and they train for spiritual life. Just like Param Brahma Prabhu, he was a brahmachari. You see, he was a brahmachari, and then he entered into family life. Now he has a nice family. You see? And then after family life, then you go on. It's not that you stay in the family life, but after family life, then you retire. Right? You don't keep working. There has to be a retirement. That is called Vanaprastha. Vanaprastha. Traditionally, Vanaprastha meant you should go to the forest. But you don't, in this age, it's not very convenient to go to the forest. <laughs> you have to go and live in uh, <laughs> Cameron Highlands. <coughs> you know, so we, we don't see that. But we see what you have to do once you retire from the work, you have to take up full-time spiritual duties. It means you go to the temple and do service. Or, or if you don't go to the temple, then in your home you do the worship and you study the books also. But you're not, you don't work, you don't keep working to make more money how much money have I got now? How much money will I have next year? How much interest am I getting? You don't worry like that. Your focus is only on studying the books, the scriptures, and then also chanting Hare Krishna mantra. So that is the idea of vana prasta life. You still can still stay with your family. You don't have to leave the home. But you have to stop worrying about making more money. You just concentrate on the spiritual activity. Of course, then how to maintain yourself, then that, <laughs> that's an issue. If you're not working, then how will you maintain yourself? Well, many people, they work. Like Tarun Krishna is retired now, right? How, long, how many years he worked for? Forty years. He worked for forty years. So he still looks young, you know. <laughs> still he worked for forty years. So uh, so he must have some pension. Maybe there's some pension you get when you retire if you've been working. Do they have that system in Malaysia? Yes, right? I think most countries they do that. In Singapore, in everywhere. You work, you pay, you pay money to the government probably every month or something. And so when you retire, then you get pension. So th then you don't have to worry about money because you, whatever pension you get, you live on that. And if you don't have any pension, then what to do? Then you go to the temple and you do seva. And you do service in the temple. And the temple will give you income. The temple will, you know, one thing you can do is you can go and live in the temple and do, do service. Just like some devotees, they do that, they will just retire and go to temple and they're doing service all day. You live in the temple, you don't have to pay any rent, right? You don't have any expenses. So they live in the temple and they eat prasadam every day and they do service. So like that. We have the many devotees also doing that. Not only here in Malaysia, in India, in other countries also. But people retire. And in this way, you get free from your attachments. You see, if you don't retire, if you don't retire, then you just remain attached. Just like if you have a, if you have a house or a business, you think of my house. So next life, you may take birth in the same house again. 
but you may come as an insect or a mouse in the same house. Right? Because you're so attached to the house. So you come back in some animal body in the same place. So that's not good. You want to avoid that. So family life is very good. Bhakti Vinod Thakur, I was telling you about Bhakti Vinod Thakur, he had many children, more than ten children. But he said, he, he was a poet, he said, Ye dina grehe bhajana deke greheti goloka paya. Bhakti Vinod Thakur was Bengali, he wrote Bengali songs, you see. So he's saying, when I'm in my home, and then Yedina Grehe Bhajana Deke, doing his bhajan, it means worshipping his deity. He's doing his bhajan and he says, Grehe Te Goloka. His home, his house becomes Goloka. You know Goloka? And do you, did you go there for summer holiday? <laughs> no? He didn't take vacation there. No, Goloka means spiritual world, right? We ask, where did that Prabhu go? What happened to that Prabhu, that old guy? It's a oh, Goloka guy. He went to Goloka. So Goloka is the, the spiritual world. So your home can become Goloka if we are in Krishna consciousness. Krishna Consciousness. This means simply chanting Hare Krishna, worshipping Krishna. In this way, your home is the spiritual world. And we see many great devotees, they're like that. It is said there are twelve Mahajans. Mahajans means the great souls. So the, the twelve Mahajans they're in all different positions in society. They're all authorities. They're great souls. Swayambhu Narada Shambhu. Swayambhu Brahma. You know Lord Brahma? Is Lord Brahma a Brahmachari? Yeah. Is he a Brahmachari? Lord Brahma? You know? You don't know. Is Lord Brahma a Brahmachari? No. No, is he Brahmachari? No. No, it's not. No. Who, who is his wife? Saraswati. Oh. But, but then you got another wife, right? And you got also Gayatri. Right? Because he was waiting, right? That's, you know, Brahma is only worshipped in one place, right? Puskar. He's only worshipped in Puskar. You know why? Because, because he took the other wife. So the first wife cursed him. He will only be worshipped in one place. Because he was waiting. He was waiting, he was to do the yagya. And when you do the yagya, wife should be there. So, the, come on, come on, I'm coming, I'm coming. You know, she, you know. <laughs> Taking a time, We're coming. So, so it came time. The auspicious time was coming. This is the time now. You have to be. Where is the wife? She didn't come yet. So they told me, take another wife. Take this girl. And this was the guy. So she became. Anyway, Brahma is the Grihastha. Narada is he Brahmachari? Yes. Yes. Lord Shiva. No. <laughs> then Swayambhu Naradash. Komaras, Brahmachari. Kapila, Brahmachari. Manu. Grihasta. Grihasta. And then Prahlad. Grihasta. Prahlad. Grihasta. Janaka. Grihasta. Janak Maharaj. Bhishma. Brahmachari. And 
Bali Maharaj. Krista. Vyasa ki Sukadeva Goswami. Brahmacharya. Brahmacharya. And Yamaraj. Krista. You see, so they're all great souls, they're all authorities. Some are Kshatriya, some are Brahmanas, and some are Grihastas, some are Brahmachari. Different ashrams, different varnas, not all the same. But they're all devotees, they're all in good knowledge. So it's, it doesn't matter what ashram we're in, what is important is that our activities are centered on, around Lord Krishna. Just like you have to work, you're in family life, we have to work, we have to have a job, we have to earn some income, go to work. But it doesn't mean you forget Krishna. You can all, before you go to work, you have to chant, you have to do puja, you have to do worship, and then you go to work, and then when you come home at night, then again, you take prasada, food offered to Krishna, and you can read also Bhagavad Gita, read the scripture a little bit here, have some kirtan with the family, sing the devotional songs. So that is, this is a spiritual family life. If you, if the family prays together, then they'll stay together. Now you see it's very un insecure. People who don't have good habits, they want, they'll get married for some time and they divorce. They don't stay together. It's a very big problem. Many young people today say, no, I don't want to get married. They'll say, no, I don't want marriage. Because get married, get divorced problem. So people are afraid. But actually, if they know there's going to be stable life, then it, people will be happy to get married. So it's important that there has to be that spiritual training. They have to have the nice atmosphere in the home. And the nice atmosphere means spiritual practice. It means chanting Hare Krishna, doing puja, going to temple, visiting holy places, all of these things. So when when we live the life like that, when the home is centered around spiritual activities, then it's much better, much easier for people to be together in Krishna consciousness. If people just sit and simply watch movies, you watch the television all day, then you will just simply watch violence, so many dramas and so much romance and all of these things and this way our mind will become very contaminated, very affected. But if every day you chant the Hare Krishna mantra and read the scriptures and if you eat the food offered to Krishna then your mind will become purified. We know in Malaysia People all go out, they like to go out to eat. Go out to eat means you go to eat food cooked by people who are not devotees. You eat food which has a lot of karma. Unless you're lucky, unless you can go to the Krishna conscious restaurant. If you can go to the Govinda's restaurant, then you're lucky. But most people, they go to the non-vegetarian place and they eat all kinds of impure, contaminated foodstuffs, seafood, animal flesh. 
And so definitely they become very contaminated. That means to increase the Rajagun, increase the, the Tamagun, and it makes it very difficult for them to be happy, to be peaceful. The more they're in Rajagun and Tamagun, then they want to drink also, they will drink the alcohol, and then the senses become uncontrollable. And then they get angry very easily and fight with everybody. Sometimes the, the home only like a battlefield. They don't, people don't know to live together peacefully. Just always arguing and fighting, and yelling and screaming. And <laughs> not very peaceful. So we want people to have ideal family life. Ideal family life should be peaceful, should be happy, and it should achieve the goal. The goal is at the end of the life, we can leave the world and go back to God, back to Krishna. But if you leave the world thinking, oh, my home, my family, my money, <laughs> then it's not very good. If we have so much attachment, it's not good. If we have to get rid of all that attachment. We're thinking, this is mine, belongs to me. But we, we say, we came to the world with nothing, and when you go, will you take anything with you? No. You have to leave everything behind, right? You build a big house, a nice home, you have to leave it. It's not yours. You can't take it with you. So we have to get free from all this attachment. Otherwise, it makes it very difficult for us. So we are explaining to people this, this knowledge, how we can be happy and how we can be successful. The more we have, the more you worry about losing everything. <laughs> right? But if you don't have anything, you don't have to worry about losing anything. So, when we are grihasta, you, of course you're getting more, you're increasing. But when you retire, then gradually you want to get rid of everything. And before we leave the world, you want to have given everything away. So you can give your home away, give your money away, get rid of it. Give, you can give to your family give to your children, give to your relatives. Just give it away. Get rid of it. Then you are detached. Then you are free. You can just be ready to go to Krishna. So the Grihastha Ashram family life, that is the safe, very safe ashram to be in family life. It's very safe because you're protected there. The family is, is like being in the fort. Just like if you're a soldier, then if you're in the fort, you're safe. So family life is like a fort. You're safe there. But if you're not in the fort, then anytime maya is there, material energy can get you and you can fall down to material life, fall into sinful activities. So the family life, the Grihastha Ashram is the safest place, the safest place. Of course, husband is meant to protect the wife, 
and the wife should also help the husband. The husband also has to be protected. The wife can protect the husband. Other, other women may come and say, oh, oh that man, and, you know, and she, we're already mad. It's my husband. You can't help him. Like that. So the man is safe in that way, he's protected. So family life is good for people. It's also responsibility to take responsibility. Everyone should take some responsibility. The young women get married, they take responsibility to have children, to bring up children. It's a responsibility. Taking care of the children, keep them healthy, feed them, then send them to school, get their education, all this responsibility, bringing up children. Of course, not only material, but also spiritual, to educate the children. I was in India recently, and in India there was this one couple, their child was only six years old but could recite the whole Vishnu Sahasrana. Only six. But could already recite the whole Vishnu Sahasrana. Couldn't read. Couldn't read anything, but could recite. So, like that, we try to bring up the children so that they can learn also Bhagavad Gita, we are having classes, we'll send the children for these classes, and then also at home, you have to also encourage them, right? Just like Murli Prabhu's son can recite Brahma Samhita, right? Where is he? Oh, there he is, right? He can recite Brahma Samhita? Yes. Because Father trained him to recite Brahma Samhita. Oh, Brahma Samhita, right? You know? You know Brahma Samhita? No? You don't know, right? And this boy knows. <laughs> so, that is the duty in Grihastha life. Educate the children. Not only materially, but educate them spiritually also. That they can say these prayers. Then later on, in his old age, when he's an old man, he will remember Brahma Samhita. He will remember when he was a child, he learned the Brahma Samhita and he was recited. The things we do in the childhood are very important. Prahlad Maharaj said, Komar Acharit Pragno Dharmam Bhagavatam Yaha. From the age of five. Komar means five years old. From the age of five, you have to begin to cultivate the knowledge of Bhagavat Dharma. So sometimes people think, oh, I'll wait till I'm old. I'll do it when I'm old. It will be very difficult. Wait till you're old. <laughs> Difficult to learn things when you're old. Better if you can learn when you're young. So, in family life, it's an advantage. You have children, the children will help you to be Krishna conscious. Child will say, Mommy, I want to, I want Kirtan. You say, Mom, tell me a story. Tell me about Krishna. So children help you to be in Krishna consciousness. <coughs> it's not a burden. It's a benefit. A great gain. One of our devotees, he's always encouraged. He's in family life and he has a family, five children. 
and he's always encouraging, he was encouraging other people, you should have more children, why you only got one child? You should have more children. Young people, you're young, you can have children easy, in old age you cannot, but young people can have more children, more children, more devotees, right? And more Krishna conscious. You just have to be careful that you don't get too attached to the body. You have to be attached to Krishna. So you have to keep up the chanting. You have to remember the important thing is to remember Krishna, not to just only think of the body. All right, are there any questions? chapter which mentioned Grihastas should do agricultural work and they should grow the crops like was recommended for Grihastas. So not for everybody, everything depending on the time and the place, the people. So some people definitely it's very pious to do agricultural work because you're working with the land, you're working with the soil, and so it helps us to appreciate more nature, that that earth, that is actually Krishna's energy, one of his energies. The whole planet, is called, planet our planet is called the planet earth, so that soil, that is one of Krishna's elements, in the material nature, you say, Bumerapo Nalo Bayu, come on, like the earth, water, fire, air, and ether. These are the elements of material nature. So when you work with the land, you understand, you think more about this material nature, that this is Krishna's energy. And Krishna's given us this soil, this earth. It's actually meant to be used for farming, meant to produce food, to grow crops. Many places, many parts of the world, people will just live on what they grow. They won't go to supermarket. Nowadays people don't even know how to grow food. They only know computer, they know mobile phone, they know television. They don't know how to grow food. It's very, very sad. You see, we are thinking, I will just go to the supermarket. But we should know how to grow our own food. There are some devotees, they will only eat what they grow. If they didn't grow it, they won't eat it. Many people I know in India, they will tell me, they just, they have land and they just, they don't need to buy anything. Everything they just grow, right? They have, they live somewhere in, the, in, the, in some village or something. They have some little piece of land and they can grow some, enough food to feed themselves. They don't have any problem to get food. They grow everything. But we just not only go to office, 
turn on the AC. <laughs> we don't know about go to the fields and working, plant the seeds, take care of the crops. So, so it's very good for the householders to do these things. Every family they should have a little land and they should have a cow. You do it with the cow, you get milk. And this way you can live a very peaceful life, not depending on ugly things like supermarkets. This milk from Australia, fruit from France, this from the America, and that from here. And what's from Malaysia? <laughs> Mostly cow. What do they grow in Malaysia? So this that's unnatural life, you see. The natural life is you have your land and you grow some food. But they've taken all the good land. All the good land became the factory. All the good land been occupied to build houses and to build factories and there's no good land, hardly can get good land to farm anymore. But for the householder, it's very good, very good for, for the wife that she also can take care, she wants some vegetables, she goes in the garden, she gets the vegetables from the garden, doesn't have to go to the supermarket. So when you grow your own food, then you depend more on nature. You depend on nature. You don't depend on the job. No. You don't depend on going to factory or working in the office. You just depend on nature. That's the advantage some agriculture. Sometimes people don't even know, they don't even know where milk comes from. They think milk is something like Coca-Cola. <laughs> they didn't know about cows. Some people, they don't know a banana tree from a mango tree. Because they just live in the city. They know driving, they know computer, they know mobile phone. They don't know how to grow the vegetables. They don't know how to get their hands dirty. So these things are good, these are, these are recommended. So in Malaysia, the devotees have a farm and you can go to the farm and you can be with the cows and you can see how to take care of the cows and feed the cows. That's very nice. Go there and be with the cows clean the cows, brush the cows, feed the cows. Just by doing these things, then people become benefited. They, they get rid of a lot of bad qualities. There, were these, there was this one prison, and they had very violent criminals in the prison, in the jail. The people were very violent. Huh? They, did, they did horrible crimes to people. So they put them in this place and they had to go and take care of the cows. And after they would go to take care of the cows, after they'd been taking the care of the cows for a year or two, they were totally changed. And before
before they were very nasty and violent and angry people. But after taking care of the cows for a couple of years, they became gentle. They became humble. It totally changed them. You want to become a gopi? <laughs> right? You want to be a gopi? Most people know I just want to be a goddess of fortune. I will be a Lakshmi, not a gopi. The gopis, they are simple village girls and they take care of the cows and they milk the cows. Do you know how to milk the cow? <laughs> milk the cows and then make from the milk they make the make the yogurt, make the butter, like make the paneer. You like paneer? Yeah? <laughs> so you like paneer, huh? Yeah, we, we like these things, of course, they're very nice. But we should take care of the cows. If you don't take care of the cows, then you won't get the paneer. That's why in Malaysia devotees have got land, they've got farms, and they've got cows, and they're planting and growing fruits and so on. We're planting many fruit trees. Because in the future, we need these things. We cannot always depend on the microchip. Always just depend on technology to provide food. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna describes Anat Bhavati Bhutani Parjanyat Anasambhava. All living entities subsist on food grains, right? You eat rice? Yes. Everybody eats grains. And how do we get grains? We need rain. And how do we get rain? We have to do sacrifice. We have to do yagna. And yagna means our duty. The prescribed duty is to do yagya. Just like Kali Yuga, what is the yagna? Sankirtan. There's only one yagya in the Kali Yuga. Sankirtan. So if you do next sankirtan, then provide grains. Srila <coughs> Prabhupada went to Hyderabad, Andhra Pradesh. There was a drought. There was no rain for a long time. The whole summer, no rain. So all the animals were very hungry, no grass. And then Prabhupada came with the devotees and they had a festival in Hyderabad and then within a day it started to rain. So they were very pleased, people were very pleased that oh Hare Krishna people have brought the rain.